Hey guys, Krishna Madhav Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 4 from the May 2022 POA Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions to the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so the question reads, Payne Limited has been asked to submit a business plan for the launching of a new product line. There's three components Payne Limited should include about, sorry, in the business plan. Um, just a personal opinion, business plan should not be on a POA syllabus. It should be on a POB syllabus. Anyhow, let's give them. Now, normally I give you guys more than they ask for. I'm just giving you bare three this time. Executive summary, product service or description, sorry, product or service description, and budgets or financial projections. Now, according to what textbook you refer to or what website you get when you Google, you will have many, many different components to a business plan. What they have on the CSET POA syllabus or in the CSET POA textbooks is not gospel, right? They are just that author's interpretation of what he or she may have learned on their own. There are other versions of business plans which I encourage you to explore, right? Now, let's check on the next part of the question. So it says the authorized share capital for Pay Limited is as follows. We have 200,000 ordinary shares of a dollar each, 500,000 8% preferences of 50 cents each. And we have some transactions with the shares. On the 1st of June 2021, Pay and Limited issued 100,000 ordinary shares for a dollar and 80 cents each. Now that's more than the par value of a dollar, right? There's 80 cents over. That's a share premium. The shares were fully subscribed and paid up. That means they were all bought and paid for. On the 20, 1st of November that same year, Pay and Limited issued 200,000 8% preference shares at a dollar each. Now the par value for the preference shares was 50 cents. So this is also, um, these shares are also being issued at a premium, right? So these shares were also fully subscribed and paid up. And on the 1st of April, 2022, Payne Limited issued $80,000 worth of 6% debentures. Now, what do they want us to do? Use the form provided on page 19, the prepared journal entries to record the three transactions above for Payne Limited. Narratives are not required. Let's take a look at the format they gave you. So basic general journal format, date, details, folio, debit, credit with six marks. Okay, back to the information. Okay, so the first item, if we issue 100,000 ordinary shares at a dollar and 80 cents each, we're gonna bring in $180,000 worth of share capital, right? That's, we obtain that figure by multiplying 100,000 by a dollar and 80 cents. Now, if you want to check out how to do journal entries related to share capital and limited companies, I'm gonna put a card up there and the link in the description below to my tutorial on that topic. So be sure to check it out. And then if you want, you could come back in. Right now, again, 100,000 by 180, 1.8 will give us 180,000. Now in journal entries, you enter your debit entries first and your credit entries are entered second and are indented relative to the debit entries. What accounts are we crediting? Well, what did we issue? Where did the money come from? It came from the issue of share capital, ordinary shares. How many ordinary shares did we issue? 100,000. At what value? A dollar and 80 cents. But the par value as given to us above here is a dollar. So you have to multiply 100,000 by one to show the uh, par value. Because you have to show your par value separate to your premium. You cannot show both of them together, right? Now the premium was 80 cents a share, right? So I put the work in 1.8, which is the issue price minus the par value. So 1.8 minus one will give us 0.8. 80 cents per share, which is the premium. And you multiply that by the number of shares, which will give us the total value of the premium coming in. And again, the sum of the credits must be equal to the debits. All right. Now, for the next item, Pay Limited issued 200,000 8% preference shares at a dollar each. Now, 8% is the dividend rate. That does not come into play when we are issuing shares. It forms no part of the calculation when you issue shares, right? Now they issue 200,000 preference shares at a dollar each. Based on the information here, the preference shares have a par value of 50 cents, which means you are issuing them at a premium of 50 cents. Now your total money coming in is 200,000 multiplied by one, which is $200,000. That goes to the bank account. Again, your debit entry is coming in first, followed by your credits. You will first credit preference shares or 8% preference shares for how much? Well, the value per share, the par value per share is 50 cents, and you multiply that by the number of shares. That gives us 100,000. 
then we have the premium. So for the share premium, we also have 50 cents. Now, I did the working to show how I got that 50 cents, which is the issue price of a dollar minus the par value of 50 cents, which will, on top of that, give us 50 cents itself. And you multiply that by the number of shares, which is, well, issue, which is 200,000, giving us a dollar value for share premium on the preference shares of 100,000. And when you add the two credits, they give you back the same value as the debit. All right. Now, for the debentures, we have no calculation there. This 6% is the interest rate on the debentures. And just like the 8% for the preference shares, it forms no part of the calculation when you issue debentures. So all we have to do is debit bank for 80,000 and credit 6% debentures for 80,000. You debit bank and the debit entry comes first. The credit entry is shown second and indented relative to the debit entry. Right? So this is how the three entries look. And again, the question said no narratives required. Okay, now let's take a look at the next part of the question quickly. So part C says use the information presented for the issue of shares on page 18 to prepare an extract showing the shareholders equity section, the capital section of pay limited statement of financial position, balance sheet as at 30th April 2022. Okay, so I headed up mine. So the name of the entity, name of the statement, be sure to show as an extract as at that date, right? So I'm showing finance by shareholders equity. Uh, some people like to put capital and reserve, that's perfectly fine, right? Now, I like to show my authorized share capital, right? So we're gonna to go to this top section here. We were authorized to issue 200,000 $1 ordinary shares and 500,000 50 cent preference shares. So I'm gonna show that, I'm gonna head up authorized share capital. I'm gonna put in ordinary shares at a dollar each, 8% preference shares at 50 cents each, and I'm gonna put a subtotal. This is merely for informational purposes and does, is this, these figures are not added to anything else in the balance sheet. They are just there to show what the value of the authorized share capital, the legal maximum, right? What that is. After that, we have to show the issued share capital. That's where our calculations and our journal entries will come into play. Now we issued ordinary shares. We had 100,000 right, issued, and this is the par value. So even though we issued at $1.80, a dollar was the par value. So you show your par value here, right? So 100,000 for the ordinary shares and then 100,000 for the preference shares. That's because we issued 200,000 at 50 cents. Add those together, we have 200,000 worth of the par value of the share capital in issue. Our reserves, we only have one reserve, which is the share premium, and we have two sets of premium, which we'll show together as one. $80,000 worth from the ordinary share capital issue and 100,000 worth from the preference share capital issue. And when you add up those two, we get $380,000 worth of, well, shareholders equity. Again, the 450 is not added to anything. It's there for informational purposes only. Everything else forms part of the overall balance sheet calculation. Okay, that's it for this part of the question. Let's take a look at the next part. Okay, so part D says, during the financial year ended 30th April, 2022, Pay Limited declared and paid an ordinary dividend of five cents per share and paid out the dividend due on the preference shares. For each type of share specified in the table below, calculate the amount of the, the amount the company paid out in dividends for the year ended 30th April, 2022. So they give you a nice table here, type of share, ordinary shares, preference shares, and a space for the working. There was three marks for that, right? So let me go back up to the information we will need to facilitate that calculation. Okay, so Payne issued 100,000 ordinary shares. Doesn't matter what they issue them for. We have 100,000 ordinary shares issued. The dividend per share is five cents per share. So all you have to do is multiply five cents per share by 100,000 shares. That's gonna, you're gonna see that working here, right? 0 0.05 per share by 100,000 is $5,000. So that's the total amount that's being paid out in respect of ordinary dividends, right? Now the preference dividend, you issued 200,000 preference shares, which have an 8% dividend rate. Now, the preference shares have a par value of 50 cents, right? So when you multiply the 200,000 by 50 cents, you're gonna get $100,000 worth of preference shares. And that's what you multiply the 8% by, 8% by the $100,000, right? So you'll see that here, 8% of 100,000 is $8,000, right? And that's it for part D. Let's talk about part E very quickly. So part E says, Payne Limited is planning to raise additional capital through another issue of shares. Calculate the additional number of 8% preference shares that the company can issue. Let's go back up to the initial information to check that out. Okay, so we have authorized 500,000 preference shares and we have issued 200,000 preference shares. 
So all we have to do to find out how many more shares we can issue is subtract. So we'll take 500,000 minus the 200,000, and then we'll have 300,000 preference shares left to issue, right? The last part of the question, let me put it up real quick. So it asks, calculate the total value of these additional preference shares. Well, the par value is 50 cents. So all we have to do is multiply the number of shares by the par value, and we'll get the total value left. Anyhow, that's about it for the solution, guys. All right, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question four from the May 2022 PUA paper two. If you have any further questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below, and I'll be sure to get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some interesting POA handouts. Anyway, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.